All right, welcome back to part four of the um, Stormworks Basics uh, career uh, playthrough. So, uh, you know, we have some motors up and running. Uh, boats uh, function pretty well. Uh, next thing we're going to add in is a stability system. So, uh, presently, let me just fix this paint here. All right, so we're going to add a stability system. So, as you notice, I have built up, you know, the accommodations on here, the cockpit or any of that. And part of the reason is I want to make sure this hull, I want to make sure the boat itself functions well before I start going in and uh, adding a bunch of bells and whistles that might upset the balance of the boat. So let's start getting this, make sure this is nice and stable first. All right, so uh, let's add, I'm going to add some fins. So I'm going to do these small fins, see if this is enough. They might not be enough, we can add more. So let's put one here. I have symmetry on. Let's put one here. All right, and so we have four. They're going to be on these little um, these little bump outs here. All right, and if we need to add more, we can. All right, so what are these going to do? Well, we want to control a couple of functions with the boat. The boat actually rolls really well, so I might not even do anything with the roll of the boat, but um, we're going to have to worry about pitch with this boat. So, for a couple reasons. So, let's quickly just get this running. <laughs> Alright, so let's get in there. Let's start it. So, as you can see, we have our nice new idle. Let's go uh, with the one key. Let's accelerate out of here. Now, you hear how that stutters. Um, that's something we can fix. That's just with the clutch application. Um, the speed of the clutch application. So, we can tune that later. But as you can see, the boat... Um, it's running, it's riding pretty nicely. Um, you know, it has good uh, roll stability. As you can see, I'm going full. I don't have any stability system set up, you know, on this yet, and it's still nice and stable. But let's start adding some waves. We're not going to go right to 100%. Let's go, let's do 50%. Let's go to 50. See how it behaves. So, as you can see, it's behaving pretty well. It's doing a little bit of jumping, but it's not bad. All right, so at 50% waves, this functions really well. Um, yeah, we haven't had any real strange behaviors. We're not doing any backflips. Let's start doing some, some maneuvering in here. Let me go sideways to the swells, make sure I'm not having any, um, it's not trying to tip me over. We'll do a following C with the waves behind us, make sure that's behaving. All right, so this is already really stable. And like I said, if you build a boat that is based on the dimensions of some real boats. You know, despite people saying, oh, Stormworks physics is terrible, whatever, which I don't think it is, um, it is different than real life in certain respects. But if you build the boat properly with some, you know, realistic engineering specs um, and you don't try to do 200 knots, um, you know, you'll get some pretty good function without even a stability system. So this, this actually runs pretty well, um, you know, the way it is. Um, you know, so what I want to do is let's keep creeping this wind up until it stops behaving itself. So let's go 75%. And the biggest challenge is going to be going directly into the wind. As you can see, at 75, due to how light the boat is, we start to get a little bit of flying here. And so we don't want to fly. We want. So what we want the boat to do is when the... Um, when the boat comes out of the water, we want to cut thrust, or we want to reduce thrust, and we also want to keep that nose pointed down so we don't do a big flying like this. All right, so that's at 75% wind. Let's go to 100, and you see this should make the flying even worse. All right, so still not terrible. You know, you see a lot of people in the workshop, their stuff will flip backwards, you know, it's still not terrible, but what we, as you can see, when the right there the bow starts lifting, that's causing our problems. We want those fins to counteract that, so the bow always stays down. All right, so let's reduce our wind back to zero, and let's start working on our stability system so that the um, so that that doesn't happen. All right, so let's recall our boat and let's get this. Uh, let's get working on this. All right, so we can do this a couple different ways. Um, I'm trying to think what is best. So we can do it a couple ways. One, we can add a, a tilt sensor. 
So I take a tilt sensor, put it about you know midships right at the center of gravity. Um, that would keep the boat level. The problem is we want the boat to still ride up on waves. We don't want it to pierce through the waves. So I tend not to like to do a tilt sensor too much. Um, we don't want this. So the stern is fine. We weren't having any problems with our stern. The stir, stern wasn't diving underwater. It wasn't coming up itself. But we're having some bow issues here. All right. So let's function. Let's work on the bow. So remember, this is our water line. This is where we want it, the water. So let's actually go one below the water line, which um, let me just find where the water line is. Here is the water line. So let's go right about here. And so it'll be this block here. So let me just paint it so that I recall where it is. Okay, now let's take an altimeter. Altimeter, we'll keep it pink. All right, let's put it there and see if it sticks through. It sticks through a little bit, that's fine. It doesn't need to be there, I can move it. But um, again, dials are our friends. Let's take a dial, put a dial there. Let's connect the dial to the altimeter. Let's spawn it. Now, the other thing that will help us with stability is some weight. Now, as you can see, remember what I was talking. If you have really good buoyancy to start with, you're way ahead of the game. Now, as you can see, this is our water line, right? Our deck is one above the black line. We don't want that to go below the water or, or we'd get water look like it's on the deck. I, so this is about one block. So we could actually come up one block and still be one block away from that water, uh, which we actually do want it to come up one block. Well, we're going to add a bunch of seats and equipment and a bunch of stuff which is going to push the boat further down into the water. We also might add some weight blocks in there to uh, lower the boat even more. Um, so we want. So right now, if we look at the boat, it's level. As you can see, we got about one block's distance all the way around. So that's perfectly level and balanced. All right. So the reason I wanted to look at that is we want to now check our altimeter, which I set up here, and we want to see what it's reading. All right, so the altimeter is reading negative 0.02 to about positive 0.02. So it's actually, we could probably run a zero in there. And uh, yeah, so let's run a zero. All right, so we can do a really simple um, system here. So if, let's look at our fins. So again, we're not going to worry about roll right now. Roll seems to be pretty good. Um, the fins are not all facing the same direction, so let's fix that. Let's delete these interior fins. See how these have an open arrow here? Let's uh, undo. And these had a solid arrow. I want all those to look the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these here. I want hollow arrows all around the tops. So I'm going to use my U key, and now that put, gave me hollow arrows. Now it's hollow arrows all the way to the top and solid arrows all the way to the bottom. That's good. Let me quickly, again, let's keep connecting electricity so that um, this is all set for our world, for our career, when we go in career. Okay, so that's good. So our fins are connected. Now, what we want to do here is we're going to connect the altimeter to our fins. Now, it, what we want them to do is, so let's talk about um, how the hydrodynamics of this. So in order for us to push this bow up, we need to push the stern down. So to push the stern down, we need the fins to tilt downwards. All right, that creates um, negative lift, essentially, pushing the stern down, picking the bow up. So if this number read negative below zero, we'd want these um, to push the stern down to pick the bow up. If the bow is coming up, right, so it's a positive number, we want that to come back here and um, pick the stern up to that way push the bow down. So what we can do is we can try to see if this works right off the bat by um, hooking the altimeter directly to the fins. So let's see how this functions. Now, if it does the opposite, if it pushes the, the uh, bow up more, even more, that means it's connected upside down. It's, you know, it's feeding it uh, the wrong direction. We just need to use a function block to reverse that. Um, if it's you know, if it's too much, we can reduce it. If it's too little, we can uh, multiply it. So let's start it. We'll go out and we'll run the stability test on this. All right, so we have four small fins there. One reason I use the small fins is they're nice and hidden. They don't look obtrusive. 
All right, so let's start adding some waves. We'll do the same kind of test we did. We'll go 50% wind to start. And we'll see if this, see how it's diving the boat in? See how it's dropping that bow? And see how it's more uh, realistically, you know, because in real life, the weight of the boat is gonna cause it to, um, you know, fall over the uh, wave like a hill. So as you can see, it's doing it, but it's picking our stern up too much. See how it's picking our stern up too much? All right. And it's causing those props to come out of the water. This is actually isn't bad because if I had some weight, this might actually function pretty well. So let's see how it handles this wave. Okay, see it's picking the stern up a bunch. Okay, so this is actually working pretty well. Um, it's taking the stern out more than we need, but what we do know now is this is the right direction. So we don't have to reverse our numbers. Let's go to 75. This is the same test as before. All right, so it's taking the props out, which is causing this problem, which is fine. We can fix that. We can lower the props is one thing we can do. We can, um, we can do a bunch of things to fix that as well. All right. All right, so this is already doing a little less flying. Let's go 100 just to finish the test. We'll see how this behaves. As you can see, it's steering our boat back down. And then at 100, we're going to get pretty weird anyways just because the boat's so light. It's actually going to start to fly. But um, all right, good. So we can actually start to work with this now. You know, this is actually putting us in the right direction for stability. Let's uh, recall the boat. All right, so we can do this. We can proceed in a couple ways. One, we could do some simple, um, you know, some simple functions like, you know, let's see. Um, let's try a simple function to start with. You know, I'm going to eventually probably want to put a pit in there, but um, let's start with a simple function. You know, actually, let's do this. Let's go real simple before we do this. So it's so instead of connecting this altimeter to all four fins, let's connect it to two fins. All right, so that's going to half the amount of effectiveness we have. So let's let's try this. Let's see if this works. Okay, here we go. And it's actually a good thing this boat comes out of the water a little bit here. That gives us more speed. It's fine. Let's go to 50% wind. So we should have um, half the effectiveness now of those fins. All right. So we're still, so it's still doing what we want. It's still tipping that uh, bow down. That's great. All right, so I've got a couple ideas what I want to do here. All right, let's shut that wind back off. All right, so let's do a couple things here. One, all right, so we have the the middle fins there are doing nothing. The outside fins are controlling for the uh, bow altimeter. All right, now let's do this. Let's put an altimeter in the rear. Okay, so we want the stern, the stern here, to be, um, we also want the stern there. Where did I put this here? Um, see, it doesn't matter where I put the altimeter as long as I index. Actually, it does. Let me see. Um, let's find where that line is here. It's right here. Okay, so let's stick the altimeter right there. All right, now let's connect this altimeter here to these fins. So this is going to control for the stern of the boat. Make sure those are on the right level. Those are both aligned on the right level. Yep. Uh, are they? Let me just double check. I want to make sure these are both at the same height because it will start to run into issues. Yep, they're at the same height. Okay. So this uh, altimeter here is now going to control the, the stern. So these are going to work to try to make the bow stay down. These are going to work to try to keep the stern down. Now. If that has issues, we can also add a couple of small fins up here to keep the bow down and leave these in the back to keep the stern down. So we have a bunch of options. 
All right, so I'm going to take this altimeter now and read instead of this one. Use my dial. Let's go read the altimeter. Okay, let's let it settle. We had some waves still. So as you can see, that's showing about 0.12. All right, let's let's start it up. Let's get going. See how this functions. All right, so we have one set of fins controlling the stern, one set of fins controlling the bow. Now it's caused us to lose a little weight, a little speed, just because the fins are, you know, are causing some drag. Let's start to add some uh, wind, 50%. Try to keep the numbers all the same. All right, so the so the stern's still coming out a little bit more than I like. Okay, so let's uh, do this. We will control for this by going and putting some forward fins. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a um, add a wedge. Let's let's add a one wedge. We'll add a wedge like this. We'll add a block. We'll add a wedge. Let's make it a one by four. Okay. So we add a little protuberance there. Um, and so let's add some fins. I think that's exactly what I want to do. Let me see. I'm trying to decide if I want to hide this or not. I think I'm going to hide this. I want to be able to have this sit flat. So that's a one by four. I don't want to mess with that. Okay, right here. This is where I'm going to do it. I'm going to just cut a piece out there. Let's do fins. So we're going to add some fins there. Okay, let's try going altimeter directly to the bow. Let me have the stern control all of these for now. Let's spawn it. And let's see if this works for us. Uh, we're still on 50% waves. That's fine. Uh, let's start it up. Let's see what's going on. All right, so it's instantly flying us. That's because the... Um, let's watch these front fins. Okay. Let's make sure these are turned in the right direction. All right, so uh, let's actually, let's try something different here. Let's get a little bit more complicated. All right, so stability tuning is going to be one of your more challenging things to do. It's, it's more time consuming than anything. You know, and again, this is getting really specific because, you know, like I was saying, um, you're really not going to, um, you know, you're really not going to, be at 100% wind very much, so it's not like this is a constant occurrence. Like as you see, we were functioning very well at, um, you know, we were functioning very well at some of our slower speeds anyway. Um, so let's let's try something different. Remember, I said there's a bunch of different things you can do here. So let's reconnect this front altimeter to all four fins. All right, uh, let's do a quick test just so we we can remember what it looks like. We're at 50% wind, I think, still. Let me make sure. 50% wind. We want to make sure. Okay, so the other thing, too, is keep in mind, when you're going, you know, a lot of people and will ask in game, uh, how can I get my boat to stop flying at 100% wind? I'm trying to go 75 knots and 100% wind. Well, in real life, what are you going to do when you're in heavy seas? You're going to reduce your throttle. So that's also another thing to consider. Um, We'll add another system that will fix some of this. But as you can see, um, so it's it's overreacting a little bit. So let's try something. Okay, see how it's overreacting a little bit? Okay. Let's try this. All right, so let's go function. Let's hook the uh, altimeter into the function block. 
let's do x divided by 2. So that's going to half how much. So it's going to hopefully react 50%. Um, again, PID is going to be your best bet, but that's going to require a lot of PID tuning. So I'm just trying to get this as simple as possible for now. The other thing we'll do is we'll add some mass. Um, I'll show you one of the reasons why I do that when I build a boat. Adding some mass is going to help us a lot too. Alright, see if this behaves itself a little bit better. Alright, so another system I'll often add here is, you know, uh, I call it an anti-fly system, and this actually usually works pretty well for the um, waves as well, is um, you set it up to an altimeter, and so when you, when essentially when the boat comes out of the water, the props come out of the water, it will automatically reduce the thrust with the numerical switch box, and that way, so it's kind of like you, if you were manually driving the boat, when you were, you know, when you were going to go over a big wave, you would reduce the throttle, you go over the big wave, then you put in throttle again, or you come up to a big wave, you'd reduce the throttle, put in throttle again, so that's what essentially that system mimics, so we'll put in that as well. All right, so let's try something else pretty simple here. Okay, so that's working pretty well. Let's uh, try this as well. So let's try lowering our props by one. So let's select our props. We'll cut them. We'll move them down one. We will paste them in this lower position. This is going to make it so that it's harder for those props to get out of the water because what it's doing is it's causing the, um, you know, it's causing the props to, they have less resistance because they're not pushing against the water anymore. And then when they hit, come into contact with the water, they're all spun up, and so everything moves much faster. So is that that is the, actually the gearbox there? So you see, do I have to do a bunch of stuff to get this to work right? Kind of do. So let's see. Um, all right. So this is this isn't going to be too big of a deal here. Let's uh, start by. Start by selecting all of our motors. We're going to move our motors forward one block, essentially. Oh, just kind of screwed that up. Let's resize our grid. All right, so we're going to move our whole motors ahead by one block. And I actually want to grab the gearboxes, too. So let's cut that. Let's move this ahead by a block. And let's paste it. We'll merge that back to the deck. Um, we need to change a connection here to put our air back on. Um, fuel is good. Fuel is connected fine. We need to move um, this whole section of ground here. Uh, that has all of our fluid ports for our coolant system, cooling system. Move that there. We'll add block in here. We'll merge that. Okay. So now this is going to allow us to move our um, our props down by one. So we'll use our enclosed um, angles here, and then we'll just use a piece there. We'll add on, uh, what do I want here? I want to put a solid block in there for aesthetics. OK, so we moved our uh, props down. Let's do a wedge. Again, this is just a lot of detailing looks is what I'm doing now. Either do that or like that, or do I like this? Let's see. Kind of like that. Or one more option. Again, this is just for looks. So you see if I like that. I think I like that best. So we moved our props down one. So let's test this out. So this should keep our props in the water a little bit longer. Okay. Let's see if this functions better. It's 
That already seems to be working a little bit better. That seems to be working pretty nice there. Those fins aren't really in the water, which might be part of it. Let's look at our speed. Speed's up to 30. No, that's because the wind's on, but let's just quickly go to 75. Um, Yep, it's gonna do a little bit of flying, let's see. Okay. All right, so we'll keep working on the stability here. So one thing I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add some mass. Okay, let me get rid of this wind for now. All right, so uh, let's look at our boat in calm water here. Let's look at the water line again. Okay, so let's look at our water line. So as you can see, we wanna come down a block we're also going to add seats, we're going to add gear, we're going to add, um, you know, uh, probably put an enclosed cabin in there. So that's going to add a lot of mass. So one thing w that I like to do here in my building process is I want to get the boat set up the way it needs to float. And then, um, so I do that with weight blocks. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to look for the center of gravity, this uh, CG right here, that pink node. All right, and I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to delete a section right underneath it. I'm going to go, in this case, I'll go two on either side. I'll actually go three on either side. I'm going to run and start running into um, that there. And so as you can see, we have three blocks on either side of that center of gravity. I'm going to grab some weight blocks. All right, now I'm going to put these weight blocks in. As I add more and more mass up top, as I add things like cabins and seats and everything else, if this water line goes too low, I can always start to delete weight blocks. So that makes it so I can easily delete weight blocks to get back to the buoyancy that I want. So we're at 2741 mass, let's check it. All right, so we're gonna check that water line. As you can see, the water line is much closer now. We could actually probably even do maybe a little more weight. Actually, that's pretty good. Let's do a little tiny bit more weight. So the weight's going to do a couple things for us. It's going to make it uh, more stable, less likely to fly, less likely to tip over. As you can see, I can stand on here. We're not tipping at all, really, with that good weight on there. So let's um, add two more rows of weight blocks. Um, so I'm going to just delete out this here. I'll come across here, and um, we'll fill in weight blocks. Now, Weight blocks have these annoying little diamond on there, but this boat, we're not going to have any access down here. I might put it just like an RP, a little hatch, so you can look down at the engines, but we're not going to walk around here, so it doesn't matter what this looks like. And this is going to be underwater, so it doesn't matter what that looks like. All right, so now we're up to 29, 21 weight. Let's look at the water line. The weight blocks are also a good way if you need to move your center of gravity forward or aft. So as you can see, our black line now is pretty much perfectly where we want it. If we jump on the deck, which I'm in space now, if we jump on the deck, as you can see, we don't have any of that water effect washing over our deck. Um, so let's take it for a run. Now we added weight, so we're probably gonna cut down our speed a little bit, but again, that's not a huge deal. Um, later, you know, I can, um, I'll supercharge this engine maybe, show you how to do stoichiometry. So we lost like eight knots. Um, which is considerable, but um, we'll see how the stability works here. Part of that, too, is if we don't rise out of the water as much, we're not going to um, be able to go as fast. Let me put on some wind, 50%. As you can see, it's much less, well, you know, we also lost some speed, but it's much less, um, it doesn't fly as much. Okay, so you can see this uh, behaves well now. Let's go 75. So the more weight you have, the less likely it's gonna try to fly. Okay. All right, so let me do a couple things here that I forgot to do. So one, um, let's, let's move those fins down a block. Let's move them down here. So let's cut and paste these fins. Oh, 
just want that. Cut down, move that down a block, paste it. Uh, I'm struggling to see where they are. Okay, let me bring out my paintbrush and find it. Okay, there we go. All right, so these are going to be a little lower in the water. So these are going to uh, interact less with the air and more with the water, which gives them more effectiveness. Let's merge all these back together here. Okay. All right, let's uh, see. We have those connected. Let me also, I want to get rid of this um, function block. I'm just going to make it x instead of x divided by 2. Um, Again, pit is going to be your best bet for really having good control over that. But, um, you know, that's going to take a bunch of pit tuning. And, you know, again, this boat doesn't need to be perfect right off the bat. You know, this is for basic missions. Okay, let me... We're still at 75% win. Let's go to 50. Let's make sure it behaves itself at 50. So it's behaving at 50. Let's go to 75. We're probably going to have to add some fins in the front to get it to work perfectly well. Yeah, we're probably going to have to do that, which isn't a big deal. So this is a very basic system. What it's doing, it, this is a, what I would consider a dumb system. It's essentially taking an altimeter. If, you know, the more and more and more you get out of the water, the more and more the more the fins want to work, which isn't a good system. Um, because, as you can see, you're getting porpoising here. Um, let me let me start with a, a PID. I know it's PIDs scare a lot of people, but they are the best way to do it. So let's see. Let's do. I have a blank microcontrol. I call blank. Just makes it easy. Let's go put the blank here. This is going to be our stability system. Stability. Okay. We want to, let's make that four. Okay. So let's see. I want, um, we do input number. Let's do bow altimeter. Bow alt. Okay. Then I want this to go out number output to fins. Stern fins. This is in case we want to add a bow fin later. Um, let's go like that. I don't need it that big yet. Okay, let's go in. All right, so we want to take the altimeter number. Let's put a pit in. Um, I'm going to start with an advanced pit, and I'll go change that size again. Logic add number input. That's going to be my p-value. Again, this way it allows me to change my values on the fly. So what do I want? I want a set point. I want that set point to be zero. I don't need to put in a number if I want zero. I'm going to put it here just in case I need it, but if I leave it blank, it's zero. Bow altimeter is our process variable. Uh, P is going to be our P, our P value. I'm just going to do a constant on to turn the PID on. And that will go out to the stern fins. Um, so when I had it directly connected to the altimeter, it was working directly opposite the altimeter. So as the altimeter would go up, the fins would go down. So you got this constant oscillation that would eventually, theoretically, it could either increase the oscillation or it could decrease the oscillation. As you saw with that last one, we were getting huge increases in oscillation, which was making it worse. The PID should f make that better, um, should start to, you know, it will automatically correct those oscillations. So that's why we want to do that, why this, despite it being somewhat complicated, it makes it much, um, it makes it more precise is what it does. Okay. 
So let's uh, take this keypad and we'll uh, use the same keypad we used before to put it here. This isn't connected to anything. I'll just delete that, but there's our P. Um, so we're going to spawn this. Let's do 50% wind. Try to keep all these numbers the same. Six. And we'll get moving here. So we have nothing in there now, so our stability system should not work at all. So let's see what no stability system looks like here. I'm going to try to go directly into the wind. Try to get a nice long straightaway. Um, we'll go into third person. We'll watch it. See, this is again why I say use a test world like I'm using here. So you can go into third person, do things like look from the outside, see how it looks. Okay, so we have a heading. Okay, as you can see, it's letting the bow come up. Okay, it's not bad. Looks pretty good. Now, in real life, what would you do in, in a high seas situation like this? You would reduce down. So we're at 11 RPS. Let's go down to 7. As you can see, of course, you can slow down. Now, a lot of people in Stormers hate to slow down, but that's what you do in real life. You'd slow down. You'd be beating the absolute hell out of yourself if you were hitting the waves this hard. But let's continue with our testing. Let's try to let the stability system do the work for us. I'm going to increase back up to max thrust. There we are. Okay. So let's get the PID working. So let's start with 1. Let's see what the PID does. So as you can see, it's keeping the bow up more. Okay, so as you can see, it's working. Is it working too much or is it working opposite? Okay, it looks like the PID's working opposite what we want. Yep, the PID's working in opposition to what we want. So let's fix that really quick. So that's one thing you want to watch is if the PID's working in the, in the correct direction or in the opposite direction. So that's easy to fix. All we have to do here is take the uh, function block. We're we'll going negative X now. We could also flip over the fins, but it's easier just come in here and do a function block than move four fins again. All right. So now we have a negative x that will invert our um, our value. All right, now we're going to use the same number of one that will um, keep our results the same. So let's do one. Let's start it up and let's go see if this makes our bow rise worse or better. All right, so as you can see, it is going in the correct direction. See, it's pushing the bow down over the wave as though there was actual weight in the world. So that's the correct direction. But as you can see, it's a, you can see how violently it's moving those fins. It's moving the fins too much. All right, so it's going in the right direction now. So we need to invert the signal to get it to move in the right direction. So now let's half this number. Instead of 1, let's do 0.5. So that's um, decreased how much it's um, moving those fins. So it's not moving the fins as much. It's a little bit smoother on the fins. So the P value should be doing most of the work for us. Um, we can go into to I and D, but um, that's doing most of the work for us. All right. So now it's, it's getting a little bit choppy there. Let's, um, let's try 0.25 see if this is enough see how this functions for us so that's looking pretty good okay so yep like I said I, I was gonna end up at a pit anyways pits are much better than trying to do some of these simpler systems like a ballast system you can do with altimeters easily but this generally functions better with a pit We'll put an auto anti-fly system in here that will automatically reduce the thrust to zero. It will essentially you'll zero your throttle um, if the props come out of the water. And then the second they go back in the water, it, it turns them back on. So that you'll kind of surge, you'll hear, oh, oh, oh. But that's what you'd be doing in real life. As you came up to a big wave, you'd reduce a little throttle, go over the wave, give it a gun in the trough, come up to another one, reduce, you know, in a little boat like this. But that looks pretty good. As you see, we can hit a couple of real high waves, and we, we recover really nicely. 
We're not flipping, we're not doing backflips. Let's go to 75% wind. Again, we're really rarely gonna run into 75% wind around the beginner area. That's more Arctic territory. We're at 75% wind now. Okay, we're getting a little flying. I could fix that with bow with a bow fin. But again, you're not gonna run into 75% wind um, much around the beginning area. But still, it's not bad. It's, 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 you know, we're at full throttle. Again, what would you do in real life? You would reduce this throttle. So let's, that was a big fly there. Let's reduce this throttle to, uh, let's do about eight, eight or nine here. So as you can see, I reduced the throttle. That's really the answer is, um, you know, like you do this in real life. You're not gonna be shooting off waves in real life. You'd reduce the throttle. And as you can see, the stability system is working well. So I'll put an anti-fly system in there, which will automatically reduce the throttle as you come up out of the water. Um, we'll add that as well. So we'll do that in the next video. All right, so see you then.